So we're setting this machine now for the conditions we saw in the main part of the field. So we're asking it to go about 15 to 20 centimetres in depth, 150 to 200 mil deep, to just get below that layer where we found in that wheeled area in the field was, was, was down to that depth. And there's a little bit of trial and error here. We've got machine on the tractor. You need to set the roller at the back here to, to determine your depth. And, and possibly the way to start is number one, get the machine level, which is a top link adjustment. We're very fortunate here to have a hydraulic top link, so it makes things very easy. Uh, lengthen or shorten the top link to, to get the, the frame of the machine horizontal to the ground, so that the front tines more or less are working at the same depth as the back tines, and their lifting angle is, is what the manufacturer would want for a start. We can then play around with that a little bit. If we want less surface heave or disturbance, we can lengthen the top link to, to reduce that lifting angle slightly, or we can go the other way just marginally. It's the benefit of having a twin row machine, parallel beams, we can, we can use the top link to quite good effect. Where you've got a, a machine in a V format, which we'll look at subsequently, that's not quite as easy because if you alter the angle from horizontal, you make the outermost tines work at a significantly different depth to the, to the innermost central ones. But here, we've played around with the top link and we've got a, a reasonably effective job at depth across the width. We haven't quite moved all the soil, but we've been going very slowly. And I think the thing to do with this type of machine now is go at two or three different speeds up and down the field and judge the finish and judge the movement across and you will find the best speed for the finish you want and even not particularly aggressively boiled finish if that's the requirement but fast enough to shift the soil across the full width to depth. Uh, so we'll, we'll do some runs now at various different speeds and show you the different effects that we get on the surface. A few features about this type of machine. Basically, you've, you've got two, two beams with the tines on. The tine spacing uh, can vary a little bit machine to machine, somewhere between 35 and 40 centimeter centers. And basically, it's a relatively low rake angle point here. So we're not aiming to boil the soil too much to the surface. The leg itself has got a little twist on it to try and encourage when soil fractures from the, the leading part of the point, it fractures at about 45 degree to the surface. And the aim of this leg is to run into that fracture zone so that we're not, as you do with a vertical leg subsoiler, we're not trying to hit undisturbed land face on. So the aim is to try and reduce surface disturbance a little bit. We've got two rows, so we can we can play around a little bit with the, with the pitch. If we want a slightly steeper rake angle, we can shorten the top link and give ourselves a little bit more lifting action, a little bit more penetrating action into tough conditions. Let me show you that on the headland. But here it's doing a, a fairly effective job in one pass. We've tried different speeds, four, six, eight, 10 K, uh, just to see the effect that that has on the surface and through to depth. And the biggest effect that's having I'll show you in a little while, is, is the, 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 the disturbance and the soil movement across the profile improves as you go faster. The whole thing is controlled in terms of its depth by the roller, simple pin adjustment, so if you want to go deeper you just lift the pins up. So looking at a, a different soil loosening machine, a V-framed uh, subsoiler here, wing tines uh, spaced a little further apart than the previous example net, but uh, they've got wings on, so we, we're doing a lot, we're basically doing a lot more of the soil movement with the wing and using the point just to gain entry in the soil, as opposed to the previous machine where the point effectively was doing almost everything. Now, this is purely 
getting his entry and we're doing the lifting effect by the wings. So this, this machine will be capable of, of lifting the headland in one pass. Um, but obviously very important then, it, it's a question of having having the machine so we can lift the headland at the appropriate depth, but also making that adjustment so we don't waste time, fuel and effort going too deep in the rest of the field. So um, it's still important to, to check out the depths and even more important, once the machine's been pulled through to check the effectiveness and make sure again we've done the job at depth. Um, the, the principle on a V form uh, gives some advantages in terms of the fact we're progressively loosening the ground so any, any interaction between the tines is, is minimised, we're not squeezing the soil between tines. The way that the twin beam machine did that was to have two beams so that we didn't have the tines too close together. Uh, because we've only got effectively one beam, the stagger helps in that respect. And it also helps to move the tines away from the wheels of the tractor because they're, they're further back as they're wider apart. And, and this really is, is the, the, the one thing that you have to remember with a V4 machine. If you, if you operate it with a top link other than leaving the, de the chassis dead level, you'll put the outermost tines in a lot deeper than the centre one. Uh, or shallower depending on whether you lengthen or shorten the top link. So it is important to run these with the chassis and frame running level wherever possible. Um, whereas the double beam machine we can tweak around a little bit according to conditions to achieve what we want. There is a relationship with all tyne machines uh, in terms of the, the, the correct spacing for the working depth. And if you, if you have a machine without wings, just chisels like the last machine, you would normally multiply the working depth by one and a half to get the centers between adjacent tines. If you put wings on, you can increase that to twice the working depth as a center. So if we're working at 30 centimeters deep with either machine, technically the other machine should be 45 centimeter tine centers and this one should be 60 centimeter tine centers. If we pre-work in front of that to, to take away some of the requirement of these tines, we could increase that ratio to two and a half to one. So a, a 30 centimeters deep would be near a 700, seven, just over 700 millimeters, 70 centimeter centers. The angle of the wing, the, uh, the, the actual lift angle of the wing, the rake angle, it's important to have a relatively low rake angle. The steeper the angle of lift, the more compression you give the soil. As a result of that, when soil gets wetter, the more compression will tend to squeeze it and close the pores up. So you want a relatively low rake angle, which is, is affording more upward force than it is forward force. And both of these have a relatively low rake angle forwards, and it's very important to achieve that. Even if it means, if you're not working quite as deep, that you relocate the wings to make them a little bit shallower. Uh, rather than have a steep wing, because that really does increase the boil near the surface, the draft and the, uh, the ineffectiveness, if you like, of leaving that level finish on top. A few final um, features of both these tines and tines in general. If you look at the, the wear shin part up the front, you can see this one's inclined rearward, so we've got a slight lifting effect, whereas without the wear here, this one's actually inclined forwards and is very narrow. Um, almost like a knife blade and a, a forward inclined uh, wear shin does actually help to keep the surface disturbance down and the width of the wear shin also is important. The narrower again the more it becomes a knife the better it is and the same applies to any tine. If you really want to minimise surface disturbance and this is very relevant with grassland then preceding the, the tine with a disc, with a vertical cutting disc to cut the surface of the ground so that it can part around the tine as opposed to being lifted and boiled up the front of the tine minimises any surface heave and actually keeps that surface intact. Very, very important from a grassland point of view that. Keep a, a close eye on wearing parts as metal wears back and it'll depend on the, the season, the soil, conditions, the moisture levels. As metal starts to wear back, the geometry changes and with that you change the effect on the soil. So you'll get different effects as these wear back. They've got less lift height, 
so that they're not going to do the same job. And this happens over a grad gradually over a period of time. So it's important to check once in a while behind the machine regularly that you're still doing the job you think you're doing. And that's the best place to check it, really. If you, if you can perceive that the, the, the points have worn back, have a dig and just check you're still happy with the job you're doing. So we've got some examples of different points uh, that fit on these machines. This is a, just a different manufacturer's type of point. It does a very similar job. Uh, we're using it really to illustrate wear and keeping these tines effective. Once the point, the leading tip, wears back, and this one has worn back, once that wears back to a, a significant distance, then the action of the tip becomes the same as the wing, as opposed to being distinct out in front on its own. And when it becomes part of the wing, this radically increases the risk of bringing a lot of big cobbles to the surface, big clods to the surface. So it's important to try and maintain that leading tip well in front because then that does its opening action. It does the penetrating and leading action and the wing takes over and does the subtle lifting action to lift the soil so it can drop off the back and fail in tension and give you some vertical fissures through the profile. You can see the farmer in this case has welded some bits on there to, 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 to sort of offset the wear on the wings, but we haven't had the same effect on the tip and that, that will lead to a higher draft and, and a, a less effective operation. So we've looked so far at digging holes to assess the structure. Different parts of the field, very important. Possibly the most important time to dig a hole is when you've done the job to make sure it's done what you hope it has. So I've dug a couple of holes here uh, with the machine operating at two different speeds to show the differences in, in, in cultivating effect at depth. The hole just in front of me here, we're cultivating at, at uh, very slow speed, 4K. And you can probably appreciate here, we're not actually moving all of the soil at depth to a consistent level. There's, a, there's at least a 10 to 12 centimetre difference in depth between adjacent tine points. So contrast here to the hole that we've dug behind the machine when it was working at 10K. You can appreciate here, in between adjacent tines, we've moved a lot more of the soil to a consistent depth. The difference in depth between point position and, and midway is probably no more than three centimetres here. So we've done a much more consistent job by going that bit quicker uh, at the same settings for the machine.